I'm really pleased to be with you today and to introduce a little bit this uh, wonderful endeavor in, uh, in space. So I am Claudia Muré. I brought with me my flat suit. I was with this suit in a, inside the International Space Station. Have you seen in some picture we have a special scaphander when we are on the top of the rocket and in the landing capsule because there is some risks, danger, depressurization in that case. And this one is the one that we wear inside the station. So, 1957 is a special year. It was the launch of the Sputnik, the first artificial satellite uh, around the, the Earth. It was the year of the creation of Europe with the Trefe de Rome. So that means that's something important also here in, uh, in Luxembourg. And that's uh, my date of birth. <laughs> I'm born in, in 57 with these two stars, Europe and space. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a rheumatologist. And when I was 12, I had this wonderful opportunity to see the first human landing on the moon. And you will see some pictures. And it was really something exceptional. You have seen the moon in the sky. The moon. And it was a human on the surface of the moon. And really for me it was striking to see that's a dream, but that's possible. And what it happens for me when I was working in an hospital to discover the possibility to become an astronaut, I thought, why not? It's a wonderful opportunity to try to be there. And at the time, it was not just military pilot, test pilot, but it was open to researchers, to engineers, to doctors. So I said, why not me? I will try. And I got it, and I had this wonderful opportunity to go twice in orbit. First time it was in a Soviet station, Russian station, Station Mir. And the second time it was in the International Space Station. And the International Space Station is still around the Earth now. And maybe for the Italian girls and boys, maybe you know that on board the space station, the commander of the space station is Luca Parmitano, an European mm -hmm. Italian astronaut. And maybe you have seen also in some picture, and you will see that there is now an active European female astronaut, and that's Samantha Cristoforetti. That's, we have two Italians active and very bright uh, in, in the European core. So, I joined the European Space Agency, where there is German, French, Italian, British uh, astronauts, Norwegian, Swedish, so a lot of nationality, and all together, we are part of this wonderful adventure to be in space. The International Space Station is not so far that's 400 kilometers in orbit around the Earth. We need just one hour and a half, 90 minutes, in order to do an orbit around the Earth. That means 60 times a day. We can see a sun rise, a moon rise. So that's really wonderful. The speed. It's a great speed for the satellization around the, the Earth. We are uh, 20,000 kilometers per hour. So we start. You have seen that on the rocket, the Soyuz rocket. We are in Baikonur, Baikonur in Kazakhstan. The capsule is in the top of the rocket. Speed zero. Wow. Ignition to launch. And you go to the speed, 28,000 kilometers per hour, in 8 minutes, 45 seconds. You can imagine. Uh, it's, uh, and then you are in microgravity. 
in orbit. And with your little capsule, you have a two days travel in order to join the station, to duck your capsule with the station, open the door and enter in this wonderful laboratory. And in this laboratory, it's microgravity, free floating. That means you are not at all living as you are living on Earth. You float in the station, everything is different. You need to change everything in your way to move, to put the thing somewhere because everything is floating everywhere. The food is different, so you will ask all these questions later on. We will have time to discuss that. And you can look through the window, and through the window you see the planet Earth. Around the planet Earth, that's black cosmos. Mystery. But on the planet Earth, you can see the lights of the cities. You can see the wonderful colors. There is some colors you have seen there. Wonderful picture of the wonderful planet. And that's very striking to see that. Very impressive. But we have to work. To work, to work. There is a lot of experiments in this laboratory. And for a doctor and a scientist, as um, it was fascinating and absolutely wonderful to work in this environment with my colleagues. I'm still working for the European Space Agency, but now I'm looking beyond. That means not just in the station around the Earth, but how we can go further, further, for the moon and then the Mars planet. I think here, in this amphitheater, in this auditorium, maybe there, is, there are the future candidate astronauts for the Mars destination. I think we have already the astronauts selected for the Moon destination, because the Moon, it will be soon, the return on the Moon. 2024, 2028, that means in the 10 years, no, maybe you still will be in this school. There will be male and female astronaut on the surface of the moon. But Mars, the planet Mars, the red planet is far, far, far away. And that's really still very complicated to go there. We can go with probes, with landers, with automatic uh, uh, orbiters. But for human travel to Mars, still we need time, we need to prepare, and we need to so this is a new generation of astronauts, the European Space Agency. We have seen Luca Parmitano, and Luca is on board the station now. He will come back next week, on the 6th of February. He has been there in the station for six months. A crew of six astronauts on board, Russian, American, European, International Space Station. So we are planning everything in order to go back to the moon. That's why I put this video here. And you see that we need to think how to build houses on the moon. And that's complicated on the moon. That's not exactly the Earth. There is no atmosphere. There is difference of temperature. Minus 150 degrees. Plus 150 degree. There is meteorites. There is lots of criteria on the moon, and that means we need to think everything. So why not this inflatable house? But it's not enough. If you want to protect the body, the astronaut, you need to protect the inflatable habitat. And what we will use to do that? There is a Wonderful idea is to use the dust that there is on the moon, the regolith, and this dust, to use it to make some material to build the house. So there is, for example, here uh, 3D printing, a little rover taking the dust and using the dust in order to, to make the protection of the, of the house. And within that, we will need to have the 
oxygen, hydrogen, all the vegetables, agriculture, in order to, to live and work. So, we need to master all that before thinking to go to Mars. That's why I say that maybe here there will be scientists, engineers, veterinarians, no, maybe lawyers or so, but we will have to think about that. So that means you have a future with space. And uh, that's why it is important for me to share with you this uh, wonderful trip that uh, I had. So, for example, here you have the training, because the training is uh, something important. You need to be fit, physically be fit, but you need to be prepared in case of uh, poor landing, depressurization, fire on board. That's an hostile environment. That's uh, coming home and opening the door. There is a lot of uh, risk. We know the risk, we master the risk, and we are trained for that. So we are confident that we are able to do it. But that's a long process of training. And this is life on board. There is a wonderful window of the cupola where we can see this wonderful earth. And we can see the moon. We are not really closer to the moon. But that's wonderful to see the moon in the black cosmos. We can see also the cyclone, volcanoes, fires, these pictures that uh, Luca Parmigiano on board sent through the social networks. We can see auroras on board. That's really a wonderful planet. But we have to come back. And we come back with this little uh, vessel landing in Kazakhstan under a parachute. And we are preparing the future for the moon. Exploration. 500 years ago, it was Leonardo da Vinci, Magellan, European explorers. And we and you are the explorers for the future. So, see the moon. So that's why I'm happy to have this uh, opportunity to share. You will have questions, how it works, um, what do we do uh, on board, how to organize the future, and I'm really happy. I hope you like mathematics, you like sport, you like new languages. When we are in training for the International Space Station, we need to speak Russian, English, then French, German, depending on your nationality. And now also we need to learn Chinese, because China is also going yes. on the station, on the moon, on Mars, and open to cooperation. So Chinese language is also something yeah, important now in the preparation of the, of the new astronauts. So sport, I said, in order to be fit for this uh, uh, situation. And then when we are on board, we can be a, a, a scientist, a researcher, so I have a little experiment to do on board. But not just experiment, we had also to be prepare for what we name the man maintenance of the station, that means the, the, the repairs, repairs that we have to do on board. Because sometimes the ventilators are not more working, the computers are out of order, so we need to be able to, to change everything. And something also that is important, I did not prefer that the space walk, that means going outside the station in an extra vehicular activity. And then you have to wear a special scaphander, your house in your backpack, in order to be able to cope with the temperature, with uh, no pressure at all uh, in the 
extravagant environment, and that's a great and difficult endeavor. And Luca Parmitano did, I think, three spaceworks uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, with a wonderful success to repair one instrument, our kind of station. We were very proud of the, the success of this, uh, of this mission. So that means whatever the job, the uh, desire you have to participate, there will be some place for, for you. You will need to be enthusiastic, patient. Yes, patience when you are young like that. Maybe you don't know exactly what does it mean. Thus for me, I've been selected in 85. And my first flight was in 96. That's many 11 years. Training, preparing. Not so much waiting, but there was also there were a lot of things very interesting to learn, to cope, to share, to prepare. But when you really want to do something, you need to be determined and you need to be patient. And you need to work a lot, but I'm sure that uh, you are already in this uh, in this spirit. I don't know what you will have this morning, but maybe you will have time to see a little exhibition that is just there. So you will have a picture, and even with your teacher, if you want that, that uh, with your teacher, if you want to have more elements, information, pedagogical uh, resources, so you can enter in contact with me and with the European Space Agency, and uh, we will be really happy to, to share all these uh, elements with you in order to boost this uh, desire to, to see what does it mean, space. And this is just one part of the space. That's human exploration. But maybe you have heard that we have probes going through the solar system. We have Pepe Colombo going to Mercury. Soon we will have a solar orbiter going to the sun. And we launched also CAPS a few weeks ago. And CAPS is to see the exoplanet. That means planets that are not in our solar system but with all the suns, all the stars. And maybe there, there is some form of life. We don't know. For the time being, we know that we are the human beings on the planets, that the planet is wonderful, but in the universe, there is billions and billions of stars. And maybe somewhere, there is different forms of life. So this is research also for the future. And maybe you will enjoy participating in this kind of research. Thank you.